Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for motion matching for Unity. In previous tutorials, we looked at how we can manipulate the speed of our trajectory generator to match our animations and change that at runtime uh, for different sort of movement styles. So for example, moving slower when you're crouching. But we haven't looked at what this input profile is. Now let's have a look at our character moving, and I'm using a joystick now, but watch what happens. It's, I'm not, a master of keeping my stick at the same length, uh, the input is actually being remapped to a specific speed within a certain range. I can only go at this speed, uh, I can only go stopped at this speed, and I can also go at the max speed. So how is this being done? Well, this is actually the result of the MXM input profile. Basically, what it does is it takes my input, it remaps it to a viable input that I previously set, and then that is the input that is used. Watch what happens when I remove the input profile. You'll see that I'm able to get different lengths of my trajectory based on how my input is pressed. Now, this, you might think that this is better, but it's not really, because we have animations that run at specific speeds. If we... Um, if we have this going on and we don't have animations that match this specific speed, you might get problems like this where you can see he doesn't know whether he should walk or run and he, so he goes between the two. This is actually a very common thing in games in general, even those that don't use motion matching. They will remap speeds. Often you won't be able to even move beyond a certain point on your, um, on your stick input. And you'll basically have you know, you're walking, running, jogging, depending on what animations you have for your game. So you only want to get the speeds that you actually are using. So let's grab our input profile and throw that back in. And we can see now that I can only get the speeds that I want, my run and my walk. And obviously it smoothly blends in between so that we get the acceleration and the deceleration. Okay, so how can we create one of these? Well, it's quite simple. In our project view, we can right click create MXM utility input profile and we'll get a new asset. Name it however we like and we can add different remap sets uh, to remap certain ranges of input to viable um, inputs. So in my case, let's start with a remap set. Let's start with three remap sets. We've got standing still, we've got walking, and then we've got running. So while the player is pushing the stick from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.1, I'm actually going to remap that to zero. That whole range from zero to 0 0.1 on the stick is zero. We want to keep our position bias and direction bias at one for this first step, because you've got to remember that the position bias or the position responsiveness of the trajectory points, it needs to be high so that it can get back to zero quickly. So the next range is the walking. I'm going to start from 0 0.1 and say the stick is pushed all the way to 0 0.7. I'm going to have that whole range for walking. And for that, I think it's around 0 0.3. What you tend to want to do is you want to play with it. Um, you can change these values at runtime and you'll see how long the trajectory is and you'll be able to clearly tell if it's matching or not. Um, so play around with the, with the numbers there. And for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit less responsive. So, I mean, one is full responsiveness, um, which is the base settings on our trajectory generator. Let's say it's a bit slower, um, but still pretty fast to turn. So, um, slower to accelerate or decelerate, but pretty fast to turn. Um, not quite as fast, but still okay. So, the next one is our last remap set, which is the running range, and we want that to be from our 0.7 to 1. So you can see now from between these three remap sets, I've covered the full range of a stick from its 0.1 magnitude, I mean 0 magnitude to 1 magnitude. For this one, it's just all 1 because we're basically going to take the maximum values um, that we have provided here. So the, these multipliers in this MXM input profile are multipliers applied to these numbers here, just so you're aware of that. So we've taken our input, our raw input, we use the MXM input profile to shape that input um, into, um, and then we output that into the system. 
So let's have a look at that. We'll chuck our new one in, we'll hit play and we'll see if that was good. Okay, it looks pretty good to me. We're getting the walking input. It's about right. And there we basically have it. Now, let me just show you what happens if you get it wrong. So say I remap the walking to 0.5 of the speed. And I could have actually changed that at runtime, by the way. Uh, so let's see here. Um, see, so it's struggling here. It doesn't know what to do. <laughs> because what's happening is I've given it an input that there are no animations for. There are no animations that run at that particular speed. So it's thinking, well, what should I do? And it, there happens to be a jump animation, which for some reason I haven't um, marked as do not use yet. Uh, regardless, it can't find a suitable animation. So it's either going to go between running and walking or it's going to do something crazy like this. There we go. It's, oh, it's managing to get the walking now. So what we do is we can tweak this at runtime. It's kind of a guess and check. We'll put down to 0.4, see how that looks. That's getting closer. We can see it's closer to the actual walk. Put down to 0 0.3. And I mean, of course, I already knew this, but the first time you're not going to know it. That looks pretty damn spot on, so we leave it at that. Of course, you can have different ranges. I found that for walking, you actually do want it to go all the way to 0 0.7. It's surprising how short that distance is on the stick. So there we have it. You might have different ranges. You might have another for jogging, and you might have another for sprinting. I mean, that's getting really granular. Um, I would probably do, put sprinting on a key and change the overall speed, but that is basically that. So now we know how an input profile works, but what if we want to have different input profiles for different movement types? Maybe your strafing has completely different, uh, needs a different profile, or maybe your combat needs a different profile. We can really easily change this at runtime. And because it's an asset, we can make a script and we can slot all our different input profiles into um, serialized variables that we create and then just swap them out when we change between strafing or running or whatever. So I'm going to show you just quickly the basic API for that. So let's go to the trajectory generator and let's have a look at the script. And this is the property you want to change. It's simply input profile equals, and then you pass in that asset. So let's do that really quickly. I'm going to go to the um, example demo input here, edit script. Okay, so let's just create a serialized field, private MXM input profile. And I'm just gonna call this M test input profile. So let's go back to here and that should show up. Okay, there it is. And I'll drag in our tutorial profile there. So now we have access to it through our code. Um, let's just say on start, you could trigger it any way you want. So for example, if I started strafing or whatever, but this is just to show you the, the API. I can tell my MXM trajectory generator dot input profile equals M uh, test input profile. That's all you need to do to swap that out at runtime and it will go smoothly. Um, let's have a look, we'll just double check that changes, I'll put the original one in and we'll see if it changes when the game starts. And there we go, you can see it's changed to the tutorial one there straight away because I had it in that start function. So that is MXM input profiles. Uh, it, may, it might seem a bit weird, but it's really quite useful. It's done in so many games that uh, use motion matching and don't use motion matching. Highly recommend using it uh, to get the best uh, locomotion. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.